Gray's description of liberalism. And we are at his first um, ingredient of or essential element of liberalism in general, and that is individualism. But uh, so far in discussing discussing individualism, we have been focusing rather on, rather rather on freedom rather. So we have uh, I have claimed that uh, freedom is the essential element of liberalism, <clears throat> and all other claims like individualism, egalitarianism, universalism, and progressivism they are um, subsumed under this you know or secondary to this essential element. And the reason for Focusing on freedom is, uh, I, have, I have mentioned a few before, but one of the reasons is that it explains, for example, how liberalism can be individualist, uh, individualistic in its claims, but actually end up being non-individualistic in reality. Like, in fact, end up, uh, end up actually demolishing uh, in individuality. Or restricting uh, indiv individuality, so that cannot be explained if we focus on individualism as such. And there are many other things. So I'm going to look at uh, these aspects today. Why freedom is, why focusing on freedom is the right strategy in understanding liberalism. Okay. So when we focus on freedom of the individual rather than individualism as such, one thing we notice is that individual want freedom from external influ influences but that's the con that's the just the instrument of freedom to do things and as so that freedom to is positive freedom so as is well known liberalism focuses on negative freedom and leaves it up to the individual to do what she pleases with herself in her positive domain as long as she respects the similar freedom for other individuals. So in other words, liberalism claim doesn't prescribe or claims that it doesn't prescribe. For the individual to do. For the individual what to do. Okay, so it's up to the individual what to do. So when the individual is. So what does uh, the positive freedom of an individual means? It means uh, fulfillment of your desires. The satisfaction of your desire. Now, for the satisfaction of desires, satisfaction of desires and the prevalence of that sort of morality requires, negatively speaking, destruction of. Uh, traditional mora uh, morality, which focuses on curbing and ta taming your desires. Um, the dominance of the morality of desire depends on the illegitimacy of the tra traditional moralities which are based on taming and curbing desires. Secondly, uh, destruction of uh, traditional family because that's based on you know often subsuming your desire based on love or sacrifice because uh, the foundation of family is love and sacrifice and love and sacrifice are against the uh, against the essence of the morality of desires and three is the so you have to build a new society new type of society start with that would be a nuclear society because that would you know reduce what family is in a sense so you want to build a liberal society, a liberal family in that, and based on liberal family, it's a social constraint on desires. Uh, pursuit of desire should be seen as something desirable in a society, and, and not something 
uh, frowned upon. And finally, state the purpose of state is not to impose or to promote its own good, but to promote the morality of desires, which is the morality that individuals should be free to pursue their own desire as long as they are compatible with the similar pursuit for other individuals. And the state also seemed to, because that's where the final thing comes, the desire for satisfaction of desire. Positively, you need resources, uh, material resources especially. And if the purpose is to maximize, and that's what freedom is, satisfaction of desire, and minimize their frustration, this relates uh, this pursuit of freedom to capitalism because the concrete form which the pursuit of uh, freedom takes is capitalism because capitalism provides because capitalism is based on basically the economics uh, the ideology of capitalism is economics which states that desires are unlimited and but the resources are scarce so this scarcity principle is goes at the heart of the ideology of economics which is uh, a, a very important justification for capitalism so a society liberal society justifies capitalism it's one of the most effective justification of capitalism because capitalism is justified on the basis of religion like protestantism Capital capitalism has been justified on the basis of uh, communism communitarianism nationalism but liberalism has been the most effective justification of capitalism because it says that overcoming this overcoming is scarcity is the necessary condition for freedom that is for the satisfaction of and maximization of uh, desired satisfaction for each and every individual and minimization of desires uh, frustration for each and every individual that connects liberalism with capitalism so even though the state doesn't have any of its own good so to speak but its good is to protect and promote uh, capitalism because capitalism is the necessary condition of the fulfillment of positive freedom which is satisfaction of desires maximization of the satisfaction of desire and um, minimization of the frustration of desire so the one uh, important uh, benefit of focusing on freedom in this way is to be able to describe and understand the organic relationship between liberalism and capitalism and even though liberalism is supposed to be based on individual freedom because the presupposition, presupposition is that is the scarcity principle scarcity must be overcome in order to make this possible liberal society in actuality what become dominant is not uh, individual freedom but freedom for capital but that is that that is seen as the necessary condition for the fulfillment of uh, individual freedoms in the long run so even though liberal uh, liberalism based on individual freedom what prevails in a liberal society is the freedom of capital and not the freedom of the individual and that sort of uh, resolve the, resolves the paradox that even though it's claimed to be an individual uh, autonomy and mastery of individual in liberal society actually what prevails in real terms is at, l at least when uh, individual freedoms are pitted against the freedom of capital the, the freedom of capital are the one which actually trump most of the time so this 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 was the first one that uh, focusing on freedom gives us two benefits we are able to explain the relationship between liberalism and capitalism mm -hmm. and the second is we are able to explain at least in theory a focus on individual and their freedom but the fact that in actual liberal societies individuality actually vanishes uh, as the society matures into a mature liberal society and what prevails is you know what different people have dubbed uh, what is described differently as one dimension one dimension sheality or plurality of plurality which is actually geared towards um, singularity etc <coughs> um, that's the first thing the second thing is uh, focus on freedom and it, a relationship between individual freedom and desires and the f ultimate focus on desires makes another thing clear for us uh, and focus on desire also leads us to the relationship between liberalism and capitalism because for in order to satisfy your desires and if you are 
want to make a society in which maximizing desires and minimizing their frust frustration for each and every individual is your prime in fact only a social and state level good uh, then the society will create is a capitalist society because in order to satisfy desire you need resources and that's clear from the work of such liberal philosophers as Rawls for example where he talks about primary goods and its relationship with the basic principle of freedom um, but focus on desire makes another thing on other aspects also clear and that is why individuality vanishes in mature liberal societies um, and people become similar or more or less the same <clears throat> uh, and the reason is desires when you dedicate yourself to desire so desires are important uh, human individual mechanism through human acts for certain things and avoid certain other things but desires remain individual des desires of an individual only as long as those desires are uh, tamed and they are subsumed under my will I'm able to uh, call them my desire only if they are under my command but if, I, if an individual ded dedicate themselves to desires then the it is the nature of desire that if you give them free reign even though they are your desire desire they actually become autonomous and they in turn rule you rather than you ruling them so they in actual terms they are no longer your desires the desires actually are you are the desire of the, those desires or instrument of those desires and since liberalism is based on maximizing freedom and one of the key element of that is maximizing desires and minimizing their frustration the society dedicated to the supremacy of desire and morality of desire maximization actually creates individuality which is ruled by desires and since desires are something abstract in that sense they dominate individuals they use them their instruments so even though in so liberal society end up being a society which is dominated by morality of desire and that give it gives this society its one dimensionality and desire abstract desire become the sovereign an individual become actually subservient to this sovereign so liberal society in actual term even though it's based on it sovereignty of individual what in actual term happens is it establishes the sovereignty of the sovereignty of desires as such abstract desires and that's why even though liberal society is supposed to be individualistic individuality and the sovereignty of individual actually if you uh, actually vanishes in the mature liberal societies and what is actually sovereign is desires and capital is another face of this the sovereignty of desire the sovereignty of capital so the second uh, benefit of second positive uh, aspect of focusing on freedom is it explain the sovereignty of desires in liberal society and consequently it all explains again the sovereignty of capital and also why individualism actually vanishes in which all liberal society even though is supposed to be based on the based on the key principle of individualism as John Gray has uh, tell us uh, okay so now one last thing and then we'll finish off finish this session the last but not the least uh, benefit of focusing on the concept of freedom is that on the one hand it uh, gives us the clear picture of intimate and close conceptual and normative relationship between different modernist and postmodernist ideologies and number two it also makes clear the relationship between these modernist and postmodernist ideologies like liberalism and socialism to capitalism and it helps us to understand why the modernist civilization is a capitalist civilization and everything else liberalism socialism and other ideologies are just the ideologies of this uh, cap capitalism as a civilization so so the reality of the modern, modern western civilization which replaced uh, christendom is that it is a capitalist civilization and over time horizontally and vertically it has been supported by 
different ideologies, and although liberal, liberalism has been its core, the most successful ideologies, uh, or you know, in different times, it has been supported by other ideologies like Protestantism or socialism or Marxism or communism or nationalism or these days postmodernist movements, single issue movements like feminism, like environmentalism and other isms, etc. So this relationship between these variety of views become clear. Their internal relationship and their relationship with capitalist capitalism as a civilization if we focus on the concept of freedom. And I'll just give you a glimpse of how this can be understood in the next few minutes and then we'll finish this session. Okay, so th this is how freedom provides us the gives us uh, a clear idea about this intrinsic relationship between different ideologies of capitalism despite their internal conflicts and enmity and all those things. Because when we talk about freedom, we can talk about freedom of individual individuals or freedom of groups and then depending on focus groups can be either nations or more basic communities that can be might be freedom of labor of gender or it can be species freedom of species so it doesn't matter which ideology you're talking about. If you're talking about liberalism, anarchism, you're talking about um, in freedom of individual. You're talking about nationalism in this modernist and postmodernist form. You're talking about freedom of nation, freedom of community. You're talking about socialism or liberalism, socialism or Marxism. You're talking about freedom of labor or freedom of humanity in communism. Uh, if you're talking about uh, feminism or nowadays emerging, um, what should we call it, uh, maleism. <laughs> masculinism, machism, um, they focus on the freedom of gender uh, and you know people have also uh, freedom of minorities or things like that. You can, you can uh, as long as you focus on freedom and okay, maximizing freedom in liberal, uh, in those both negative and positive sense, you're the basis of your uh, individuality and society and statecraft, you are dedicated to a civilization which is which has different ideologies. These are ideologies that are all related through freedom. And if you focus on freedom, as we said, you might be talking about individual or humanity and their sovereignty or sovereignty of your gender or your minority or your religion, for example. If this religion is based on freedom, for example, Protestantism or forms of Islamic uh, banking based uh, and economics, Islamic economics and, the, uh, and things like that, uh, what you actually end up creating is not the sovereignty of individual or groups or labor or humanity. What you create a sovereignty of is, is the sovereignty of capital. And you all these build capital capitalist system in their own ways. Because dedication to freedom actually is concrete form is dedication to capital because in for freedom what you need is as economics teaches us overcoming the scarcity principle. So sovereignty of individual cannot be established unless the sovereignty of uh, scarcity can be overcome and scarcity cannot be overcome unless you uh, let uh, the sovereign, uh, you give sovereignty of capital a full reign, uh, and that's why it doesn't matter if you call talking about nationalism, Nazism, fascism. What they actually build are capitalist societies in their own way, liberalism, Marxism. What they actually build is capitalism. We can see China today, uh, and that's because it's not an accident. Because it's all dedicated to worship of freedom. Because when you worship freedom, you worship Iblis. What you worship, you worship capital. You establish the sovereignty of sovereignty of capital in different ways, and this uh, gives us the idea of why these different ideologies end up building societies which are essentially similar in their structure and in their values. So that's why that also tells us that what's the civilization is capitalism. All other things are ideologies: liberalism, Protestantism, nationalism, uh, Marxism, humanism, etc. These are ideologies of capitalism, and capitalism uses them according to its own needs. Even though it has to be said. Uh, liberalism is the most successful ideology of capitalism and the reason is clear because it's easy for capital to use an individual rather than the whole nation or the whole humanity or whole gender etc. So resistance to uh, capital is the least in liberal societies that's why it's the most successful ideology of capitalism but that doesn't mean that others are not the ideologies of capitalism. Okay so that's a good place to start.